So this was exactly what I needed on this Monday. I really needed that encouragement from like the parents of, hey, like you're doing a great job. We're so happy you're a child's teacher. Good morning, YouTube. So lately I feel like my weekends are dedicated to grad school work which is okay because that's just gonna be my life this year. I am trying to finish my entire program in a year, which is ambitious, but I definitely think it is possible. I've gotten a lot of questions about my program. I'm gonna be doing videos coming up like about it, so don't worry, you will get more information. Um, but I had a pretty laid back weekend, didn't really leave home a whole lot. The only reason I left home was on Saturday. I went to a couple of my students' football game, but otherwise I was just cranking out a paper and did a little bit of lesson planning, all that good stuff. I'm ready to get to school this morning. I do have collaborative planning with my team and then I will catch up with you all during my planning time. So this was exactly what I needed on this Monday. This is something that was started by, I think our equity staff, it says you've been mugged. So basically it has uh, treats inside the mug and then you put the sign, I've been mugged on your door to let other people know that you've already been mugged. And then you fill it with more goodies and then you pass it on to the next person. So inside of my mug, there are some flare pens, super cute and always needed. Some Reese's king sized, yes, and then some Orbit gum. So whoever it was must have known me really, really well because those are all of my favorite things. And then the mug is super cute. It says today's goal, keep the tiny humans alive. So I'm gonna make sure I get some treats to fill in this and then pass it along to another person tomorrow. I wanted to show you what I'm using for math this week. We are starting the addition and subtraction standard algorithm. So our students learn how to add and subtract in prior grades, but they use different strategies. They use base 10 blocks or partial sums or a number line. And then in fourth grade, we actually teach them the standard or the traditional algorithm. And I know from years past that students often have trouble lining up their numbers and then regrouping properly. So I made these templates just like last week, I had made the ones for rounding on a number line. I I made these templates for adding and then also subtracting. So I went ahead and just printed these on cardstock. I printed them double sided and I laminated them just for added durability. They are in a plastic dry erase pocket. That way my students can write on it and it will easily wipe off, but I do laminate them just to keep them nice and sturdy on the inside as well. So by printing them double-sided, because we're gonna be doing adding and then subtracting, I only used half of the paper and half of the laminating. Now, in terms of the actual template, I have one for three digit plus three digit, four digit plus four digit, and five digit plus five digit. And then if I'm doing like a four digit plus a three digit, I can just use this template. So I have boxes for them to write the actual add-ins. I have boxes for them to write their regrouping if they have any and then boxes to write their answers that way they will keep their numbers nice and lined up I also went ahead and labeled the different parts so this is the regrouping these are the add-ins and then this is the sum plus I have the steps written out so if students get confused and they can't remember they have it right there to reference now I'm actually going to be using this template three different ways so this is the first way in the dry erase sleeves my students will write on them with a dry erase marker as we do practice problems speaking of the practice problems previously I had just kind of you know written problems up on the board or had them in a PowerPoint but I found that sometimes my students struggle to take that and put it into the template so I actually took this exact same template and I just put it into Google Slides that way I could write numbers directly on it so here's the first example it has three digit plus three digit and then this way I can actually highlight okay we're gonna start in the ones place I get 11 so I'm gonna regroup 10 into the tens place and then put one down underneath then I'm gonna move on to the hundreds place so I'm gonna add them all up again I'm gonna regroup and then I'm gonna put the other one down below and then I'm gonna add my 
my hundreds place and write it there and I'm not using that other box. So this way it just kind of shows the students exactly what we're doing step by step and it makes it much easier to go through it. Plus it matches their template so it'll be really easy for them to follow along. I know there's probably gonna be people asking like if I have this available for sale. Um, I don't yet but I can definitely put it in my store. I'm kind of thinking of taking these templates and making them for like each different topic that we do and then doing the same thing where I offer the template, I offer the slides, and then also the notes. So here's the third way that I'm using this template. I just took and printed out the two templates. I went ahead and just wrote examples in there and I did one for addition, one for subtraction, and then I shrunk them down to fit two on a page. So I have adding and subtracting. That way my students can cut these out, put them into their notebook. We will do these as examples and then they will have their notes. So their notes will have example problems. It will have the terminology, the vocabulary, and it will also have the steps. I think that this is going to work really, really well, fingers crossed, but I just wanted to show this to you all as an option and kind of show you what I am doing for my math instruction this week. Okay, we're gonna call this speed vlogging because I need to get out of here. It is six o'clock. After school, I had girls on the run until about 5.20ish and then I came in. Thankfully, I had guidance this afternoon, so I got their science check for understandings that we did today done, graded, and I just put them in the grade book and then I had to go make a copy and our copier is down that's like over here, so I had to go all the way up to the main office and come back. So I need to get out of here because, ooh, because tonight is Chick-fil-A night, which is a fundraiser for our PTA. And I told Billy that I would meet him there at six o'clock and it is 6.01 and he just texted me he said I'm inside too many kids lol <laughs> so I need to get over there and I will catch up with you all in the morning so Billy is being the best boyfriend in the world right now and helping me film this because I wanted to show you all what I do on nights when I can't go to the gym. You all know I have a very busy schedule between teaching full time, I am in grad school, I coach multiple teams, I try to run my YouTube channel and other social media sites. It's a lot. And as much as I try to go to the gym, I make it to the gym probably four to five nights a week. There are nights when I come home and I don't want to go to the gym or I don't have time to go to the gym, but I have stuff to be doing on my computer. So so I actually had the company Flexispot reach out to me and they offered to send me one of these desk bikes. I'll be honest and I'll say that I was very skeptical at first because I didn't think that it would work for me, but I said, you know what, let me go ahead and get it and I'll try it out and if I like it, I will share it with my followers. Let me just say that I absolutely love this thing way more than I thought that I would. I spend so much time on my computer between doing stuff for work, doing stuff for grad school, doing stuff for YouTube. I'm constantly on my computer, which means I'm constantly seated on the couch on my bottom and it's not good for me. I love this thing because I'm able to sit and I'm able to work on my computer, but I'm also able to be exercising and working out at the same time. Plus, I will get in comfy clothes. I'm in my pajamas right now and I don't even wear shoes because the bike pedals are actually super comfortable. So I'm able to sit here in my own house, be comfortable, get work done, but also be getting exercise. I will say that these are an investment. They're not super cheap. However, if you are wanting to get exercise but be able to do things at home, I think it works perfectly for you and I do think it is worth the investment. If you have any specific questions about what I think about the different parts of it, leave it down in the description, not in the description, leave it down in the comments and I will do my best to answer it. I will say that you're able to like adjust all of it height wise, you're able to move it close, it has this nice pad. I love every aspect of this bike. I can tell that it's not cheaply made. I am gonna link the website and the direct link to the bike down in the description and I wanna throw it out there. I'm not being paid to say any of this. All they did is send me the bike and I only had to share about it if I actually liked it and I'm sharing it because I truly do love it. I have no obligation to this company, but I'm letting you all know because I think that this is something that would work well for a lot of teachers. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the description box. Not in the description box, I did it again. Leave it down in the comments and I will do my best to be able to help you. YouTube. Chick-fil-A night last night was a hit. I got to see a lot of my students both from this year and last year and I had a lot of parents come up to me just thanking me for making learning fun and making their kid excited and I just felt so stinking genuinely happy and I needed that because honestly Sunday night I was laying in bed I was feeling very defeated because I just felt like I wasn't doing 
a good enough job because I feel like I'm trying to balance so many different things and I felt like I wasn't giving everything my 100% because I can't when I'm balancing that many things. So I really needed that encouragement from like the parents of, hey, like you're doing a great job. We're so happy you're a child's teacher. And I just, I needed that. And <laughs> I really wish I could have like captured that moment on video so I could like have it to look back on for when I'm having those rough days. I'm gonna get to school. I do have planning today, which is good because I need it. I'm gonna be out tomorrow for PD, so I need to work on sub plans. And my goal is to get that done before I leave school because I don't wanna have to go to the school tomorrow morning before the PD. So, fingers crossed. now about 425 my students are all gone I had quite a few little like errands that I had to run going up to my mailbox and taking things to students and all that good stuff but I'm now sitting down I need to get my sub plans prepared for tomorrow because I don't want to have to come in the morning so I'm gonna work on that and then I will catch up with you and show you how I am moving everything laid out for my substitute tomorrow. Honestly, I kept it very simple. Over on the left is my folder that needs to go up to the office with any other papers. Then I have my substitute binder. This is where I put a bulk of my information. Now I do have a sub binder available for sale in my TPT store. The formatting is a little bit different, but the overall structure of it is very much the same. So I'm gonna show you what I keep inside of my binder. First I have my how was your day paper. So I keep several copies in here for the substitute to fill out. Then I have my welcome letter. This just gives them a little bit of information about how we are departmentalized and then how they can ask my team teachers if they need help. The next page I'm not going to actually show because it is um, contact information and I want to keep that a secret, but it has all kinds of information in terms of like the phone extensions for administration, phone extensions for my team teachers, cultural arts, and all that good stuff. Then I have a page all about our daily schedule. So our normal daily schedule, our cultural arts schedule, our early dismissal schedule and our delayed opening schedule. Now the next two pages also have student information. The next one is a roster of all of my classes, my homeroom, block one, and block two. And then the one after that is dismissal information. Then I have emergency info, so evacuation, fire drill, lockdown, shelter in place, and then other drills. Then I have class routine, so what our morning routine looks like, our lunch routine, recess routine, and our dismissal routine. Then I have classroom information in terms of attention getters, hand signals we use, bathroom, and how we organize their water bottles. Then I talk a little bit about materials, so general office supplies, math manipulatives, and then I list out other materials. So my microwave, refrigerator, pencil sharpener, new cup kudo cards, bandages, wet wipes, tissues, hand sanitizer, plastic utensils, indoor recess games, flexible seating, stem bins, math bins, 24 cards, regular playing cards, clipboards, dry erase boards, and lined paper. Then I have a little bit of information about technology. So my computer, my projector, document camera, and Chromebooks and how to use all of those. And that is it. So like I said, kept it very simple. Then I have my actual sub plans. Now this template is in my TPT store. So I will link that for you in the description box. I just kind of do a bulleted list and I break it down by time. So arrival, morning meeting, media, and then block one science, block one math, lunch. And then we have recess, block one math, Again, because we go back to that after recess, block two science, block two math, and then deer time and dismissal. So I just kind of bullet out all of the activities. I do also leave a PowerPoint. So I have logged off of our 
computer, and when I say our computer, I mean my computer. I don't know why I said our, but I actually saved the PowerPoint to a drive that we have on the computer that our substitutes are able to access. So he or she will be able to access all of the slides and that will kind of guide them through the day as well. And then I have the actual copies and I've color coded them and I mentioned that in the sub plans. So block one math is gonna get one of the pink ones and one of the orange ones. Block two math is gonna get one of the blue ones and one of the orange ones because it's slightly differentiated. And then of course, Oh, I forgot about this. Sorry. I also left an answer key for the substitute just in case they need it. And then I always like to leave a small treat for them. So I have two Ghirardelli chocolates that they can enjoy. Now, because I am going to be at PD tomorrow, I am not going to be vlogging. I'm literally just in meetings all day. It's not a lot of fun, but that's okay. So the next time I catch up with you will be on Thursday. Tonight, I'm going to the gym and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to relax because I feel like I definitely deserve it. I also need to start a grad school assignment. And then tomorrow, after my PD, I actually have to come back to school because I'm coaching Hero Boys. And then I have a business call like later that evening. So tomorrow will be a little bit hectic, but that's okay. I will catch up with you all on Thursday. Ugh. Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> Isn't this a cute look? It is absolutely pouring outside. I'm not very happy about it. I like the rain, but I don't like when I have to go outside in the rain. Today, pretty normal day. I have planning in the morning and then when my students go to cultural arts, but I am excited because I got a really good idea for tomorrow's lesson. I got it as I was driving home last night from work at like 7.30 because after my PD, I had to go back to school to coach Hero Boys and then I had a business call at 5.30 and then I stayed at school until like 7.15 because I needed to look through their papers so I could plan my lesson for today and figure out my groups. So I'm a little bit tired, but it's okay. We're getting through it. It is Friday Eve. Let's do this. It is now six o'clock. I have been very busy today, so I did not get a chance to vlog during my planning time or my lunch time because I was just all over the place today. However, I had girls on the run after school and then it started pouring down rain while we were out there. So I had to like sprint inside and I still got drenched. So I'm looking like a hot mess. However, it was a good day. It was a really good day. My block wall was a little bit chatty, but they were working hard and like that's what matters to me and I gave them a check for understanding because we're working on addition and subtraction algorithm and like nailed it and I'm like yes because honestly we haven't even been working on it that long I feel like those templates and just the way that I approached it this year really really helped them to understand it so I'm like yes and then my block two actually earned what we call a fat fuzzy which is like the ginormous ones that I have for their jars. So hold on, let me show you. So these are the jars that I'm using for classroom management. So this is where I house all of the fuzzies. This is block one and this is block two. So yesterday my block two earned one of the ginormous ones and then they also earned one today. Now the one yesterday was given out by the teacher who was in here subbing. The one today was actually by me, which I think that that one's harder to earn than one from a substitute. So I'm really, really proud of them for working so hard and just being so focused and actually being quiet and just very proud of them. And for me, like that constitutes a great day. Feeling like my students are getting the content, feeling like classroom management wise, everything was under control. Like I'm in a good place right now. So I'm going to get out of here. I need to go to the gym. And then tonight I'm going to work on that awesome activity that I'm going to have my students do tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. So I kind of need to get the ideas now from my head, like onto the computer, but I will be sure to show you all that tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube. First of all, I'm leaving early. It is 7.10. I typically leave around 7.30. I got up at 6.45 this morning, which is the earliest I've gotten up in like two weeks. So go me, I'm having a good day. I am gonna go get myself some coffee because my birthday is on Sunday. So like I officially kind of count today as starting my birthday weekend. So I'm gonna go treat myself. I'm also gonna grab a breakfast sandwich. And then the reason I'm leaving early is because I need to get to school and set some stuff up for science today. I have committee meetings this morning and then no planning time whatsoever. So I had to leave early to be able to get it done. But you know what? I actually feel good that I'm leaving early. So I'm gonna go grab me some caffeine and then I will catch up with you at school. Good morning, can I get a large iced vanilla latte? And then can I get the bacon, egg and cheese sandwich?
this is what I had to prep for science. Today we are talking about smell and how animals use their smell and their memories of smell to be able to survive. So these are called smelly cups. They're just basic cups and they each have something different in them and then they're covered with foil. And then on top of the foil, I just poked a couple of holes that way students can smell them. So cup one has vinegar, cup two has coffee, cup three has mint toothpaste, cup four has chocolate, cup five has cinnamon, and then cup six has coriander, which I do not expect them to guess. And I did that on purpose because for cups one through five, most likely they will have some kind of memory of where they have smelled that before and be able to identify it. But with coriander, I wanted it to be something new that they had not smelled before. So we can kind of talk about how if you've never smelled that before and you don't have any memory evidence, it's really difficult to actually try to guess it. So I'm excited to do this today. I feel like it's a good activity like for a Friday because I know my students will really enjoy it. I also wanted to show you what I'm doing in math today because I mentioned that I wanted to make it something fun for my students because of having the substitute on Wednesday and I thought that this was perfect for a Friday and it's a great way to kind of practice addition and subtraction which we have been working on all week. So this is posted for my students in Google Classroom. It's called Play on Miss Frey's Birthday. When they open it up it will be this Google Slides presentation. So it says hello party planners. Congratulations you have been hired to plan Miss Frey's birthday party. You will have a budget of $999,999 to plan the entire party. I know the money is not realistic, but I want them using larger numbers. You may spend less in your budget, but you cannot go over the budget. Good luck. And then I have some directions. So they have to complete the slides in order because they are deducting from their budget every time. So they can't skip around. They must make one choice for each slide. They can't pick more than one. And then they can do their work on a dry erase board or paper and make sure they check over their work. And I I said you have been hired to do the job correctly and carefully because I've had a lot of issues with my students rushing lately. So first they're going to pick the location and you can tell each different location has a different amount that it costs. So then they will have to type and I have it so they can type right in here. I've already typed this one, um, the cost of the location and then subtract to find the money left in their budget. And I formatted this so when they type the number it will come from the right side so that way the numbers will be lined up. Then they will pick entertainment, so their options are a DJ, arcade games, or bowling. Again, they will subtract it from the budget, but this time they're gonna take the amount they had left on the previous slide and put it at the top and then subtract from there. Um, then they're gonna pick the food, so pizza, cheeseburger, or tacos, and they're gonna subtract it. Then they pick out the drinks, soda, fruit punch, or lemonade, and subtract it. Then they'll pick out the dessert, cupcake, uh, cake pops, or sundaes, and they'll subtract it. And then they pick out the plates that they want. Then they will pick out the invitations, and I included Fortnite invitations because my students are obsessed. Then they will pick out what is in the goodie bag, so candy, slime, or TVs, and they'll subtract it. And then last, they will pick out my present. So of course, one of the options is a sloth, also Lamborghini, because my students are obsessed with Lamborghinis, or they can get Miss Foray a vacation. So I thought that this would just be a real kind of interactive but fun way for them to practice addition and subtraction. It's real world. It's something that they could possibly have to do in the future, but it also goes with my birthday this weekend. So I really, really hope that my students like this. I will catch up with you later on and let you know. It is lunchtime and I'm checking in with you all. First of all, it's been a little bit of a hectic morning because one of our team teachers got sick this morning and had to leave. So she was kind of rushing to get stuff together. Our TA is in subbing for her. So I didn't have my TA this morning, but totally like is fine. I just feel bad for my team teacher because I would hate to have to do that. Like, you know, you, you don't plan on being out and all of a sudden you get sick and you have to leave like right then. That's very difficult. But it's just been a little bit hectic this morning. My team teachers and I were planning on ordering pizza to kind of celebrate my birthday for lunch, but we got so busy that my team teacher who's going to order it didn't have time, which like, I totally understand because it's just been a hectic morning. So I think they just ran out to grab Chick-fil-A for lunch and then we'll probably end up eating it like while we're out at recess or something, which is fine. But I'm in a really good mood because I did the Google Classroom assignment with my block one and they loved it to the point where I had kids asking, Miss Ray, how can I work on this at home? And like, I don't expect them to work on it at home if they didn't finish it, like I'll give them more time. But the fact that they want to work on it at home because they're enjoying it that much, I'm like, yes, that's what I want my class to be. That's that's how I want my students to feel about learning, that it's not, you know, a dread or it's not something that they hate to do because it's work. If you make it fun and engaging, they will be excited to do it. So I'm in a good mood. <laughs> and 
I'm gonna sit here. Um, I don't really have lunch to eat because I didn't pack anything, but it's okay because I'll have it later on. So I'm just gonna kind of relax during my lunch time and then I'll catch up with you all at the end of the day. So I wanted to share some good news. First of all, the Reading Olympics has started, which is a school-wide event that happens every fall. And basically, students are encouraged to read at least one hour per week outside of school and outside of their assigned reading. If they do, they fill out a card, they turn it in, and then the class that has the highest percentage of participation will actually win a prize. So one of my team teachers won for fourth grade, but we did win second place. So we get three books to add to our classroom library the winner actually gets five books and they get to keep the torch for the week so we're gonna aim for hopefully winning next week and I was not here on Wednesday when the cards were due so I think next week with me being here I'll be able to hopefully get more students to turn them in then I did end up having Chick-fil-a with my team teachers so we got the food right at the very end of lunch so we quickly scarfed down as much as we could and we took the rest out to recess and then they gave me this card and actually I want to show it to you because it's really really cute so it has a sloth on the front and it says hipster sloth was wishing you a happy birthday like two years ago before anyone else even knew about it I thought that that was really really cute and one of my team teachers actually made me brownies and I thought that that was so sweet they were on my desk this morning and like I didn't know who they were from but I finally figured out that it was from her so thank you Jamie you rock so just an update on block two. Overall, it went really, really well, but my students didn't have as much time to work on Google Classroom as I was hoping that they would because we had to go over homework. And then in block two, we also had to go over Continental Math League, which is like an advanced, almost like an extra homework assignment, but it's just like these challenging problems that they take home and work on. And we had to go over those, which is a little bit stressful because that took up like over half of the math block. So they didn't have a ton of time to work on planning my birthday party, but they did really, really enjoy it. And I'm very happy that I spent the time last night to make it because it was time consuming. It took some time. Time. however it was totally worth it and now I have it to use again next year so that's awesome I am gonna go ahead and end this vlog because I need to get home and start my birthday weekend and I'm really excited for that I will tell you all I plan on not touching anything for school this weekend I plan on not touching anything for grad school either I have moved my deadlines so that I don't have anything due this weekend and I'm just really really excited about that so if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I post a new video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I love you all very much. Don't forget to think positive and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, my Merchandise Store, and my Amazon Store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.